I got here the new Dell XPS 13 inch developer edition. Let's see what's in the box. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time here and you're looking to grow your IT skills and your IT career, you're in the right place. Just hit that little subscribe button and the bell so that you get notified when new releases come available. All right. Network automation is this newish and rapidly evolving thing. It's definitely a buzzword. We're seeing certifications pop up for it now. The Cisco DevEt, the JNCIA DevOps, and really the entire industry is moving towards software defined networks. How that all works is there's a controller that controls all of the network devices and it communicates via APIs. So we can configure either the software defined network via API or through GUI, or we can configure our individual devices via an API too. And because of this growing rush and influx and popularity of network automation, uh, the influx of tools has been just as overwhelming and surprising and awesome at the same time. So what I want to talk about today is some of my favorite tools that exist and help me as a net DevOps developer. First on the list, not too surprising, the one that we introed here is the Dell XPS Developer Edition. Okay, what makes it Developer Edition? This Dell XPS device is just like any other Dell XPS device, except it ships with Ubuntu Linux installed on it. And really, I think it's a Dell-specific variant of Ubuntu Linux too, because it came with Dell Remote Assist, Dell Linux patching, and most importantly, everything just works. Come on, let me show you the specs. If I simply Google Dell XPS Developer Edition, you'll see that there are some links that come up for it, but I'm gonna scroll down a little bit and you really wanna make sure you click on the new XPS 13 Developer Edition. Why new? Because this guy right here comes with a 10th gen Intel i7. That is a six core i7. Now, of course, this thing is customizable. So if we scroll down a little bit, well, we can't really change the CPU and we can't really change the operating system, but that's fine. I don't want to change either of these things uh, because that's what we're here for. But I chose to beef up mine to the 16 gigs of RAM and the 512 gig NVMe solid state drive. I didn't choose to bump this up to the 4K touchscreen because that seemed a little overkill for a 13 inch screen, but I've read other people's reviews where they indicated that this 4K touchscreen works beautifully. Other things you'll notice is Wi-Fi 6 and integrated graphics. Now, battery life, this is a big one because I know people are gonna ask me about the battery life. Let me tell you, I've brought this thing to my office a couple days in a row now and worked on it for the majority of the day doing .NET development as well as browsing the web. And it lasts the whole day. I haven't taken it from 100 to zero, so I can't tell you exactly how many hours it'll work, uh, but under a typical workload where I'm not hitting it too hard, I'm utilizing about 30% RAM or so, um, it's, it has no problem making it, you know, an eight or a nine hour day. Now the other items here like warranty and services, I, I left all these on the standard default things. But really what we're talking about here is we're buying a beast mode laptop that runs Ubuntu Linux. And I guess that does beg the question, why Ubuntu Linux in the first place? Well, developers have been embracing open source for a long time now. That's not too terribly surprising or new, uh, but I think the real reason, one of the biggest reasons why, is that when we create open source applications and we run them on open source operating systems, it becomes truly portable. Anyone can get an open source operating system and an open source application and run your code for free at that point. And I think that's really the essence behind all of it. So what you've then seen is that other apps that are being developed, some of the other things that we may even take a look at in a second are also open source and they pair very nicely with Linux. So having a dedicated machine for Linux based development, even using things like .NET Core and PowerShell Core, in addition to Python, Node.js, Ansible, Docker, all of these things I've tested and used already on this laptop and I can't speak highly enough for it. Okay, next thing, next favorite tool that's in my toolbox is going to be Visual Studio Code or VS Code. Again, because it works on every platform, Mac OS, Windows, Linux, it works perfectly fine. 
And why do I love VS Code so much? Well, outside of the fact that it makes, you know, pretty colors, this button right here, these little blocks, VS Code is extensible. Extensible meaning I can extend its capabilities by adding plugins or third-party vendors plugins or applets into this tool. So when I click on this, I can choose basically any language. I can search for basically any language. I can search for something like JavaScript. And it shows me all of the different types of extensions that I can add into VS Code and make it work just a little more friendly for my environment. In fact, let's check out, for instance, C Sharp. If I click on this one, I can see I don't have it installed. It's as easy as clicking install. And you can see it downloads any of the dependencies that it needs in order to run this extension. So now I'll be able to have clean formatting and debugging capabilities when it comes to C Sharp, Python, PowerShell, really any other language, or just additional extensions that increase the functionality of VS Code in general. That's what this thing is all about. So when I run my Python scripts, I'll go into Explorer, I'll jump down to say this rest comp script here. I can choose debug, start debugging, and I see it chooses the Python debugger and it just rips right through this debugging. Additional features like formatting the code whenever you save it automatically, that really helps clean up the appearance of code and it just makes working with an IDE that much simpler for me. So when it comes to scripting, I really prefer using VS Code. The next networking tool in the toolbox isn't really one that I can show you because it's an app that's running, it's Ansible. Ansible is so ridiculously and remarkably powerful and the fact that it just comes with all of this functionality baked into it out of the box just makes it an, a must have for the network automator. I mean, really Ansible, what it is, is just a collection of Python scripts. So they have scripts that configure VLANs on Nexus devices. And all you have to do is tell it which Nexus devices and what VLANs, and it handles the rest. It will connect, it will verify that the state of the network meets what you are wanting. And if it doesn't, it takes corrective action. It really just reduces the need to script full-blown Python scripts and just change that into something like an Ansible playbook, which is just a YAML document. Beyond that, there are paid versions of Ansible, but Ansible, for the most part, is free. Check this out. Another quick Google search will yield some interesting info. If I choose Ansible Network Modules here, we'll click on the first link that comes up. And if you scroll, you can see exactly this is ACI, Application Centric Infrastructure ACI. Each one of these represents a Python script or some sort of function that it can do. So interface policies, firmware policies, I see some OSPF policies here. Uh, you can keep scrolling down. We can see all the Cisco ASAs, Checkpoint, even Ubiquiti, Ubiquiti Edge OS and Edge switches, EOS from Arista, keep on scrolling down, Fortigate. We've got old school legacy iOS devices, as well as iOS XR devices, Juniper Juno's devices, Meraki. And while the learning curve for Ansible is just a little bit different because you're learning a full blown application, once you've got your head wrapped around it, scripting out a little playbook, it makes a huge difference because now you can manage the entire network from one playbook or multiple playbooks, and then check that into source control. Speaking of source control, Git, GitHub. I love source control, Git, and GitHub for no other reason other than I can publish my code to GitHub and go to any other machine in the world, pull down that code, work on it some more, and publish it back up. It's nothing for me to be sitting in my bed at night, typing away, doing some code, publish it to GitHub, get to the office the next day, pull down the changes that I made from bed, and keep working on it that way. I know that's not like the industry standard and enterprise way to work on code, but just the fact that I have this ability to keep historical changes of my code and that I can work on them remotely in all of these different places makes a huge deal for me. And you know what makes working with GitHub really, really easy? Of course, using the source control section right here within VS Code. Yes, you should probably know the git command line commands, but Quite frankly, if you don't really need to, you can absolutely get away with working on all of this source control changes right here from within VS Code. You have the ability to pull, push, sync, stage, commit, really anything that Git can do, you can do it all right here from this little source control window. 
So the easiest way to get started with this is to clone a repository straight from GitHub to your local machine and then open that folder right here from within the folder explorer. Git will automatically run and check changes that you make locally on your machine and, ch and offer you the ability to stage and commit your changes from within the source control menu. This is precisely how I work on all of my code that you've seen on YouTube as well as in the Cisco DevNet course. And my final tool that I absolutely can't live without, of course, is Postman. Postman is the tool that we use to test API connections, especially REST API connections. Postman was built in Python, by the way, and it is a remarkably powerful tool, and it makes testing and beginning coding against an API way simpler. Check it. Over here on the left-hand side, I have my collections, which is where I organize the different devices that I want to connect to. You can see DNA Center, CUCM, some ASAs, APIC, Meraki, Juno, so on and so on and so on. And then within that, I have my individual commands that I want to perform. But I can also set up environment variables so that I don't have to retype all of these things over and over and over again. I can simply create an environment variable like DNA here, and the environment knows to go to the DNA variable and grab the right URL. So if I want to log in, I can send this request in straight there, and I receive a 200 OK response back and a token. But where I think Postman really begins to separate itself is its code generator. If I click code here, I could change this to say a Python script. We'll use requests and there it is. It's generated the entire script for me. So I can do my testing in Postman and make sure that my connectivity works and then generate my Python code to at least scaffold the beginning of my script. So there you have it, Dell XPS Developer Edition. If you've got a business that will support you in buying this product for you, it, it's, I can't recommend it enough. VS Code works on any platform. And now most of the languages that you want to develop in are also running on Linux too. So you can get an Ubuntu laptop machine like I have, VS Code, install .NET Core, and do some C-sharp development on your Linux machine. Ansible, what a huge and amazing tool that brings all of this pre-built Python scripting capability baked right into it. So all you have to do is identify the modules that you want to run and against which network devices. It will then verify that the network state is in its desirable state. Source control, really the entire life of a software development project is based on source control and making sure that we're tracking changes correctly, going through testing before we deploy it to prod. Git really is the tool for that, and GitHub is a central repository where we can push our remote changes to that. And lastly, Postman. One of the best tools that ever came around was a free tool that allows us to test APIs and generate code for us. Now, a lot of the things that I just outlined here, Linux, VS Code Setup, Ansible, Git, and Postman, those things are all covered in depth on the Cisco DevNet course in CBT Nuggets. Whether it's Ben Finkel or myself teaching it, we've got you covered. So if you want to learn how to use these tools deep, check the link below for the Cisco DevNet course on CBT Nuggets. And if you're not subscribed right now, grab that free trial. Give it a shot. I bet you'll really enjoy the content because we put a lot of effort and passion into making it. So those are my top five tools in network automation that I really love right now. Thanks for stopping by, y'all. I'll see you in the next one.